Hey everybody, and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays with the occasional bonus live video. I'm super excited to share this video with you guys today because I see this problem happening a lot, and it has to do with the quality of your print then cut projects. You'll see that there are lines through one of the projects on the screen, and the other one is much, much cleaner. I'm gonna teach you some tips and tricks on how to make sure that your print and cuts come out exactly the way you want them to with a nice high quality print. So let's go over to Design Space and I'm going to show you how to do this. So some tips and tricks on printing and then cutting in Design Space. This is one of the most fun things that you can do with your Cricut and it's a great way to diversify things that you do but there's definitely some things that you can do to up your game when you print and cut. So I'm going to show you how to load a couple different images first. Go to upload, just like you would any other image, click upload image, and then click browse. I've downloaded a couple different things that we're gonna do to show you some different ways to do this. So the first one that I did was just a Mickey Mouse on a plain white background. So here is our Mickey Mouse. I'm gonna upload this as a complex image and click continue. Now with this image, you, everyone always says, remove all the white, remove all the white. When you are doing a print and cut, you do not want to remove all of the white. If you wanted to cut just around your image, you only remove the white that is considered the background. So click on the background and remove it. Now we have a little issue here with his glove because my guess is there's a line right here somewhere that takes his glove and makes it so that it disappears with the background. So I'm going to hit undo and I'm just going to kind of look at his glove and take a look and for sure there's definitely a missing line here. So a quick trick that you can do to eliminate that issue is take your little magic eraser tool which is the little um, square one and go around his glove like this anywhere you see that it might remove any of the white and you want to get pretty close to that line but you just want to go around it anywhere you think that the white might be attached and once you get to a spot that you're sure it's no longer attached you can go back to your wand tool and click and your glove will stay in place now you may have a little bit extra border around it but once you turn the bleed on and all of that you'll see that it won't make a difference but that's one quick trick if you have a spot that doesn't want to remove the white and it just keeps kind of becoming transparent it's a quick easy trick click continue and you're gonna save it as a print then cut image which is the image on the left side click save I'm gonna show you guys how to upload another image so we're gonna upload an image, click browse, and then I do have a bunch that I call my, um, they're like for my water slide paper. So it's stuff that I don't mind if it has kind of a big border around it or things like that. So I call them water slide decals. And there's a ton of different designs. I've got lots and lots of different things tons of different like backgrounds and pictures, but these are great for water slide because they don't have a nice smooth background. So it can be kind of tough to get them to cut around really easily and neatly. Now they do sometimes tell you that the image is large and because these are PNGs, you don't really have to do much to them. You don't have to clean them up, but I always save as complex. Click continue. And again, it does take a minute. You can see how big this photo is. You don't need to do anything. Click continue again because the background is already transparent. And right here again on the left hand side, you're going to click save. So these are the two images that we will work with. We'll work with this Mickey and this bunny. I'll put them both into our canvas here as soon as it's done saving. Print and cut does tend to take a little bit longer to save, especially if the image is super big like the bunny rabbit is. So we'll let this save. I'll come right back as soon as it's done. Now that our items have it saved, we just need to insert the images into our canvas. So you can select both images by holding control on your keyboard. You can also hold command if you are a Mac user. Go ahead and insert the images. Again, this part may take a moment, especially due to the size of that little rabbit image. So don't fret if it takes a second or two. It's totally fine, absolutely normal, no big deal. Now that your photos have loaded, 
What I'm going to show you is one thing to note. So if you're doing print and cut, you are limited on your size. So I'm just going to click make it right now to show you the error that it's going to give me. If I click make it right now, it's going to tell us our project is incompatible. This project is not supported by the current machine selection to resolve selection. Select OK and adjust, and adjust the affected layers. If you ever get that question or that issue, if you look over into your Layers tab, you'll see there's this little orange triangle. If you click on that, it's going to tell you what the problem is. So in this instance, our image is too large and we need to reduce the image size to 6.75 by 9.25 or less. That is the largest item that you can print on your Cricut Design Space. So what we'll do, I'm going to go ahead and size this down quite a bit. We're just going to make him five inches wide just to make him small, easy to work with, nothing too crazy. And then we have our cute little Mickey. Mickey, I'm gonna size him down a little bit more too. I want him to be about five inches. You could do an exact measurement if you wanted, but it doesn't matter. So with Mickey Mouse, we want it to cut around our Mickey Mouse. So we want to make sure that it cuts just around his shape. So he's ready to go. However, with this bunny rabbit, and I'll turn the grid on so it's a little easier to see, you can see all these little spaces that it's going to cut out. And if we were going to do this, like I said, these I usually use on water slide, but if you want it to not cut out every single little space around it, and you just want a square or a circle or something around it, the easiest way to do that is to open up a shape. I'm just gonna use a square. I'm gonna size my square so it's a little bit bigger than my bunny. And what you can do is unlock your square by using this lower left-hand little lock and you can move your square around and then you can make it more of a rectangle and you can click the square or the rectangle click send to back and then you can make sure that you have it fitting your bunny so that you don't have a ton of space around them it just depends on how you want it to cut once you've done that change your square to the color white and select both the rabbit and the square and down at the bottom you're going to click flatten what flatten does is it basically makes it all one piece so that it is not going to cut around your design here. Now I'll show you one other thing that will kind of help you guys a little bit. So if you're doing text and you don't want it to cut out around your text. So let's just say we're doing welcome to the party. Have a good time. I don't know. I just picked something random. So we're gonna do this text. I'll just change the font to something just for fun. What the heck? Let's just change the font to that. Uh, maybe not that. I hate that font. That font never works. Uh, this one looks fun. There we go. We'll just do this. You can space it out, do whatever you wanna do. I'm just gonna leave it like this for now to show you, but I am gonna change my line spacing down a bit because that is just too much space. Uh, let's see what negative three looks like. That's good enough. Okay. So again, this is going to have to fit in our printable parameters, but we also don't want it to cut out around each of our letters. So in order for that to happen, we have to use a shape again. You can use any shape that you want. It doesn't matter, but it's the shape that it's going to cut. So I'm going to unlock my square, make my square so that it fits my text, send it back. We'll just kind of center that. Change your square to white. This is very important. If you change your square to any other color, it will cut out, it will print out that color and then cut around that color. But for me, I prefer to just make them white because it saves me on ink. Now what you need to do to get your text and your square is collect, select both and flatten. That's going to allow it to print out your square or your text and then cut around your square. Again, we're going to allow it to cut around Mickey. We want to cut a square around our bunny and then a square around our words. The biggest thing with print and cut is to make sure that any transparent areas are covered with something or something is behind it and flattened to it. So now we can click make it. And because of the size of some of our stuff, it's going to want to put it on a bunch of different pages. Because I don't feel like wasting ink and pages to do this, I'm going to size these much further down so that we can fit them all on one sheet because I don't want to waste ink and pages just to show you guys this. But I'm going to make Mickey a little bit bigger, but I'm going to make this one quite a bit smaller. 
Go ahead and click make it and it should all fit on one page. Now, obviously, we can kind of play around with sizing, figure out, you know, if we want to make things a little bit bigger. I'm going to make Mickey bigger and the bunny bigger because I really want you guys to be able to see because I'm printing this out twice and I'm going to print this out twice on the same product so that you guys can see. There we go. That looks perfect. I'm going to print this out on the exact same type of paper product so that you guys can see the lines that it's going to cause if I don't print it a certain way. So I'm going to get my printer turned on. I'm going to show you guys how to do this too. So once you have your printer turned on, we're going to use StarCraft printable vinyl for this project and these work with inkjet printers. So click continue and I'm going to send this to the printer, like I said, two separate ways. So the first way that we're going to do is just sending it to printer. I'm going to leave my bleed on. I tend to leave that on. It helps reduce any of the area around a picture that you're cutting along the outline of it to give it you know any like white area so we're going to print it first this way and i'm going to take you over to my printer so that you guys can see it print out and i'm going to show you the difference between printing it this way and then printing it the second way you want to make sure that you load your paper the correct way and i do find the rear feed tray to be the best so again this is starcraft printable vinyl And we're gonna go ahead and print this one out. So here is one of them. I'm gonna go ahead and write on this one so that we can see which one is which to make it completely obvious which way I've printed. So I'm just gonna call this one first print. You guys can see I wrote first print right on there. That way you know I am not changing anything in the way I'm doing this. So first print is this one and I wanna get you guys an up close version like visual of both. So we'll go ahead and print the second way and then I'll show you what the difference is. Now that we've printed it the first way, I'm going to show you the second way. And the second way is going to give you better results. So what we'll do is click send to printer. I'm going to leave the bleed on again, but this time I'm going to turn this system dialog box on. This is super important to do and you guys will see why, but it's going to give us a much better print quality. Once you hit that and if the box doesn't pop up, it may be kind of behind something. So you might have to look for it, but what you'll do is click print and give it a second because it does take a minute for that box to show up because it's communicating directly to your printer and your printer's dialogue. So this is actually not a dialogue through design space. This is actually through your printer and that's why this is so important. Your printer prints on the lowest quality when it prints from design space. So once this box pops up and you have your printer selected, go to preferences and right at the bottom down here where it says print quality, change that print quality to high. Click OK and then click print. I'll take you over to the printer so you guys can see it print. Now this one's going to print with the high quality print. So you're going to see a difference once I can show you guys the up close version. It may be a little bit tough to see when it comes out of the printer, but once you see the up close version, you will be really surprised at the difference that you're going to see in your print quality. I love the print dialog option because it really does give you a much better quality image. So here are our two printed pages. You can see first print, which was done without system dialog, and this was the second print. Now from this angle and from this height, you may not be able to see the difference, but I'm gonna get you guys up really close to first print, which was done without system dialog. Can you guys see those lines in Mickey's ears? And then like on his face, he's super liney. And then if you come down and you look really close to the bunny rabbit, you can see lines, especially in the purple portion. So that is printed without system dialog. The second one I'll show you, which is this one right here, was printed with the system dialog. And I'll get you up nice and close. Look at that. No lines. The difference is astounding. And you can see the bleed is on. And look at the bunny. You can see on the flower that you can just see the texture of the watercolor print itself, not actually lines 
through the bunny rabbit's design. That's why the system dialog is such an important tool when you're using Cricut's print then cut option. Now remember, you will always have the box around your design because that is the registration marks. That's how your machine reads what it's going to cut. I will go ahead and cut these out for you guys so you can watch it. It's super easy to do. Nothing crazy needs to be done, but I'll show you guys them all cut out and then you guys can take a look and see what you think. I put my image on a green mat and I'm gonna go ahead and load this. And I'll show you guys what it's doing and explain to you the print and cut process from the machine's standpoint. So once it's ready, you can click the Cricut button and what will happen is a little light turns on kind of in the center of these two um, items. Now remember, this works on the Explore machines and the Maker but not the Joy. So it turns on this little light and I may have to lose a little filming light or two to do this but it reads your registration marks. If you have issues with it reading your registration marks, your paper may be too glossy, your registration marks may, may not be dark enough, or your room is too bright. It can help to turn off lighting in your room if you're having trouble with your registration marks. And if it's super glossy, just put some matte scotch tape over your lines and it tends to work perfectly. So it's gonna go ahead and read several spots on the lines to make sure that it knows exactly where it's supposed to cut. Now the maker is going to make sure that the right tool is in place and then it's going to cut around our designs. Now with this material I am using the light cardstock setting. If I put the laminate on it I would need to cut it twice but I didn't just because I don't want to waste laminate on a project that's just to show you guys how to do this. But now you'll see that it's going to cut around our Mickey Mouse. So it's just going to cut the outline of him versus cutting like a big box around him. And it isn't going to cut any of his white areas because we went through and made sure that those white areas were covered. So it's super easy to do. He's really, really an easy project. But if you have something that has lots of little tiny lines and little spaces, it's best to make sure that it's flattened to a shape. So now it's going to cut out our bunny rabbit super easy to do and now that it's done it will pop it back out we can unload it and then I'll show you guys this all cut out I'll go ahead and peel off Mickey for you guys just so you guys can see him so I'll get you a nice up close version of him first so there's Mickey to peel this you just got to peel an edge and let me find one that's going to peel because I actually wanted this one to cut all the way through so that it would cut out like a die cut sticker, which is why I used this one. I actually did medium cardstock. Typically I do light, but it didn't cut all the way through and that's okay. We can work with that. We're going to go ahead and just peel him off. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just peel our Mickey Mouse off just so you guys can see a little bit better. I cut this on a deeper cut setting hoping to get a die cut and it didn't really work because I didn't want to peel him off, but that's okay. No big deal, but there is our Mickey all cut out. Now, my machine could probably use some calibration. I can see where it didn't quite cut exactly how I wanted it to. And calibration on the Maker and the is for both the knife blade and print and cut. And calibration on the Explore is only for print and cut. But you can see it's still a cut around our Mickey perfectly. So super fun. Let me stick him down somewhere so I don't have to hold on to him. And I'm going to get the bunny rabbit off so you guys can see the square that it cut. So there's their bunny rabbit. You can see cut around a square. If you're doing something like this with like a clear water slide, you're not going to see the square, so don't worry about it. But keep that in mind when choosing an image. But again, you can see the lines. It's not a good cut. Not a good print for that one at all. And then it did cut around the block for our words. So I'll just pull that off. There's the block for the words. Came out really, really cute. Super easy to do. But again, you can do this on paper, cardstock, sticker paper, printable vinyl, printable HTV, and this is just a quick way to show you guys how to get a good quality print so that you don't have the lines like you do in our Mickey or our Bunny Rabbit, because this guy, look how nice he looks. Doesn't he look nice and clean and fancy? I just love how easy he came out. He was so nice. And all you have to do is use that print dialog, which is super easy to do takes very little effort and just make sure that you're using that because you can see I'll show you one more time so this was first print hopefully you guys can see him I'm trying to get you guys some good light so you can see but he's got those lines on his ears he's got them everywhere but it's really easiest to see them on his ears and then this guy is nice and dark really really good quality same with our bunny rabbit if you guys have 
any questions on print and cut, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer this for you. The more that I've been doing print and cut, the more tricks and tips I am learning, and I'm always happy to share those with you guys. Please, please, please subscribe to my channel. It is totally free. I post new videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays, and I would love to have you as part of my YouTube family. I hope you guys had so much fun learning about print and cut. Have a wonderful day, and happy crafting.